Hey everybody, welcome back to Running Gun, and today we have a Lightroom tutorial that we're going to do, and it's absolutely awesome. I'm going to break down how to do this really cool looking dark and moody photo effect that you've probably seen around on Instagram. It's pretty popular right now. So we're going to go into Lightroom, we're going to break it down step by step how you can recreate this effect with just about any photo. So let's get right into it. All right, so we have Lightroom opened up. Here is the original image that I started with. And as you can see, let's take a look at my settings. Um, fairly standard ISO 320. I kept it pretty low so I wouldn't get a whole bunch of noise in my shot. I shot at 24 millimeters on my 24 to 105. And I closed it down because I really wanted that deep depth of field with F11. And I shot at about a half a second long exposure. So my shutter speed was a half a second. So let's start breaking down how I recreate this effect. So for my color temperature, it's fairly warm in there. I wanted my greens to really pop out and I wanted this dark brown orange boardwalk to really pop out. So I kept the temperature pretty warm and my tint you can see is kind of right down the middle. I like that green and the green and the foliage, but you don't want to overdo it with your greens. So to start out with, I turn my exposure down just a little bit because as you can see, it's a dark and moody effect. So that already kind of gets us that start to where we're going. So I usually start by turning down my exposure, usually about one stop. You can also do this by shooting your photo just a stop underexposed. And I'll also bring up my contrast just a little bit. Um, all of these settings will obviously be adjustable depending on your scene and how you shot it. This is just kind of a quick template to throw on your photo, but you'll have to adjust everything according to your scene. Not all of these settings are going to work perfect with every image. So another thing I like to use is play with these shadows and highlights. Um, be careful, you can get too heavy handed if you do too much with these a little goes a long way but I like to turn down my shadows a little bit especially if it's wet outside and you have the Sun or the sky or any sort of light reflecting off the leaves just to bring some of that saturation back into your leaves same thing with the shadows a little goes a long way but I'm gonna bump these up a little bit just so I can get that detail back that's a little bit much maybe um, plus 10 or 20 and so I can just get a little bit of that detail back in the shadows. And then same thing with my whites. I will pump up my whites just a little bit and turn down my blacks just a little bit. Now a really cool tip that I learned, if you want Lightroom to automatically adjust your white balance, or excuse me, your white levels and your black levels, you can hold shift, double click the blacks, and also holding shift, see it automatically adjusted my blacks and hold shift and double click that white slider and then Lightroom will automatically adjust it for you now in this case that's about where I want my whites but I am gonna drag my black levels down just a little bit to really crush some of those black shadows in there for this effect now I also want to take my clarity slider this is another slider I usually tell people not to mess with too much but I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna drag it down just a little bit right there to about negative 20 just to kind of give it that little bit of a glowy dreamy feel to it. I'm going to leave the vibrance alone but I'm going to take my saturation and I'm going to turn the total saturation of this image down to I don't know negative 40 ish that feels about right I think I'll leave it right there. Now to our tone curve I absolutely love the ability to play with the curves in Lightroom so what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to start by dragging my shadows up a little bit this is called lifting the shadows when you take this point down here and you start lifting your shadow level and you'll see it starts to gray out your shadows just a little bit. I'll also take another point and I will drop that point right here in the middle to bring down my midtones. I'm going to take another point. I'm going to drag up my highlights just a little bit to make the highlights pop just a tiny bit. And then I will take and make another point here down by the shadows and I will drop it just a little bit. And now, like I said before, 
you can take these points and you adjust them towards your image, but you can see we've already made a giant leap towards where we're going. This tone curve is super powerful and you can play with it and just make little tweaks to your image and just take it to where you want to go. So the next box we have here is the hue, saturation, and luminance. Um, another little section just to make minor adjustments to your image. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to turn down my red saturation. Oh, we're in luminance right now. I'm going to go over to saturation. We'll start with that. I'm going to turn reds down just a little bit. There's not too much red in this. I'm going to take my oranges. I'm going to turn my oranges down just a tiny bit. But I will take my yellows and I will saturate my yellows a little bit more just to bring out a little bit of this boardwalk and a little bit of the yellows in the trees. I'm actually going to take the orange, pump it up just a very tiny bit. Actually, I'll leave that at about zero. I'll take my greens, and this is again another crucial part of this effect, especially with forests. I'm going to take my greens, and I'm going to desaturate about half. And then I'm going to leave the rest of the colors and saturations right where they are. So now we'll open up this luminance tab. Another cool thing, you can individually adjust the luminance of each of these colors right here. So I'll leave red at zero, I'll take my orange, and I will pump up my orange just a little bit. And as you can see, that nice warm orangey brown boardwalk, I'm making those textures just pop out a little bit. I'm going to do the exact same thing with my yellows, pump those up a little bit. So I'm getting that little bit of yellow in the trees and the highlights in the trees, pumping those up. Take my orange, I'm going to move my orange up just a little bit more so I can capture some more of that detail in that orange boardwalk. I really love it. Also going to take my greens, bump up the luminance of my greens just a little bit. I want to see that detail in those leaves that I wasn't quite getting with my highlight and shadow slider. I'm going to do same, the same thing with the aquas. There's just a little bit of blue in there. I'll pump it up and same with blue, just a tiny bit because there are some blues in there whether your eye sees it or not. So hue, saturation, luminance, that looks great. Let's move on to split toning, another crucial part of this effect. So for split toning, I'm going to mess with the highlights here a little bit, a little bit too far. I'm going to make my highlights kind of a greenish, just a little bit. Add a tiny bit of green to the highlights. That's going to add some greenish tones into the highlights reflecting off these leaves. And then for my shadows, I'm going to make them kind of a purpley blue, a little more purple, I guess, than blue. And then just add a little bit, very subtle. Again, a lot goes a long way with split toning. And then for detail, add just a little bit of sharpening. And then that detail looks good. And just a tiny bit of luminance noise reduction. And that looks great so far. Next, I love this post crop vignette tool and I keep it on highlight priority. We're just going to add a little bit of a vignette here, bring that in. So you can see your eye really starts to focus towards the end of this path. I love how the light comes through these trees and just hits the end of that path right there, and everything in here is just a leading line for your eye towards the end of the path, and it just takes your eye down this pathway. So added just a little bit of vignette. That's a little bit too much. Crank it back a little bit. Take my midpoint. And what this midpoint slider does, it moves your whole vignette effect towards the center. And then I'm going to leave roundness at zero, but I am really going to feather this to about 100, and then pull back on the effect just a little bit. And then you can see these little boxes right here. I can turn the effect on and off. That looks great so far. I'm also going to go down to my dehaze effect. And I'm going to turn that up just a little bit. I like this dehaze slider. It's kind of like a mid-tone contrast slider. Really makes some of the small details pop out. And one more absolutely crucial part of this effect in Lightroom is to make your own masks. I love using these gradient filter masks. I can just take them and slide them when I want to make adjustments just to certain sections of the image. So what I did for... Um, my gradient mask is I brought down the temperature a whole lot. I really wanted to make those greens over on the side a lot cooler, and I also made them 
just a little bit more green with the tint. I also brought up the exposure just a little bit so you can see some more details in there. I thought the detail looked great over here, so I just want to affect the detail in this part of the image. I also wound up, wanted to bring up my contrast just a little bit, bring down my highlights because the exposure kind of blew out some of these highlights and tiny details in the highlights I didn't want to lose. Also wanted to bring up the shadows just a little bit and then bring up my whites just a tiny bit and then bring down my blacks just a little. Now when you start seeing too much detail, that's when you can go in and you can turn down your clarity a little bit. That adds just that little bit of glow to the highlights, which I love. And then turn down my saturation a little bit here. So I'm not overdoing it with the greens. That looks great. And then I'll turn up the haze, or excuse me, dehaze just a little bit. And I think that looks really good. We brought out a lot of the detail. Let's turn this on and off and we'll see what that looks like. Cool down some of these um, warmer areas back here in the foliage. That looks good. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to duplicate this gradient mask over here. And do the same thing where I cool it down. Bring up the exposure just a tiny bit. See, I'm bringing up that rail exposure. A little bit of contrast. Turn down the highlights slightly. Turn up the shadows to get those shadows back in there. A little bit of extra detail. Turn up my white values. Turn down the clarity. Turn up that dehaze just a little bit to get some of those details. And then turn down the saturation just a tiny bit. Then I'm going to go back. And as you can see, it's a little bit darker on this side. So I'm going to turn up the exposure on this left-hand side of the image. I don't want to do it too much. Turn down these shadows a little bit. And I think that looks great so far. All right, so that is it for this effect. As you can see, and I've said multiple times, you just make little adjustments based on your own image. So everything is absolutely customizable. That's what's so awesome about Lightroom. You can go in and make so many tiny little tweaks and there's an infinite way to adjust your photo and edit your photo. So this is our final image, and then I'm gonna click over here. Here was the final image that I was going to recreate. So we got pretty darn close. Every time I do this, I just kinda of eyeball it and see where I get. So this is where we got in this image, and I think it turned out awesome. So that is it for this episode. Make sure you guys comment down below. I wanna know what you guys think, I wanna know what you guys want to see. Do you want to see more photo edits just like this? Drop some suggestions and I'll be sure to do it. Make sure you guys give this video a like and subscribe for more awesome photo editing videos just like this and hit that notification button so you're seeing all my new videos when they drop. So that is it for this episode and until next time, get out and go shoot.